I think it's dope too because I think the lineup of artists you chose is very interesting too because you have somebody like a Yemi who's like huge in Africa but and she's has huge records but still kind of isn't mainstream mm -hmm. so it's like very interesting that you would choose an artist like that I think that's for me a, a mu being a music person I think that's so cool that you know you would sit down and have a conversation with a Yemi or something like that because I I personally don't know uh, a lot of her story but I know her music sure you know, so I think that I think that's yeah, very cool. And I think a lot of what we do comes down to again, we're not a big giant company, so it's a relationship, right? So you connect with somebody. Yemi is a great person. Right. We text all the time. We talk all the time. She's it, she's inspiring in her own way. I mean, uh, and I think it, that type of relationship, if you can build with somebody on a personal level, and then you can take it to the brand level, is great. Right. It's it's more. I'm a big authentic person. Right. I don't like brands forced on me. Mm. I want to feel like I'm discovering a brand, finding it for myself. We don't advertise. We've never advertised. We want the consumer to kind of to discover the brand on their own so they mm. feel a connection to it. If anything, we're the opposite. We'll tell an account, whether it's a bar or restaurant, if they tell us, you know, uh, well, you're going to need to support us if you want us to push it onto our consumer. And my response is, you're not ready for this. Right. If your consumer's not ready for this, let's not start. Let's right. not do this. Um, and I think that's that's the type of connection that I think it it's it's going to last a long time once a person picks up a brand. Yeah. Okay. Whether it's it's clothing, whether it's a hat, whether it's music, right. there's a connection there. Okay, okay, let's talk about these other brands. Um, Skeleton and Cloud Chaser. Tell those, me about those brands. Those are well, Skeleton is uh, is a very cool brand. It's uh, uh, a Malbec uh, out of Argentina, which is amazing and uh, uh, a Gruner Veltliner out of Australia. Um, you'll have to appreciate uh, I'm the consumer, so right. these are all brands or products I drink, right. and that's how this all starts. Mm. Um, uh, Cloud Chaser is why we started Bel Air Rosé. Cloud Chaser is a, is a still rosé out of Provence, mm -hmm. and it was our way of learning how to make Provence wine, mm -hmm. and the intention was to make the best sparkling Provence wine. Provence, for those of you, is the French Riviera. It's Monaco. It's Nice. It's Cannes. It's the Côte d'Azur. It's the best part of France. And today, Bel Air, for example, is the single largest rosé uh, comes out of Provence. That is Bel Air. Wow. Um, our white side of the category is is Lux, which was our initial launch, which is uh, traditional champagne style, a little bit sweeter, and then gold. Uh, we want our whole mentality is best of the best. We produce uh, our our Lux and Gold out of Burgundy, which is where the best Chardonnay grapes come in the world, um, which is fantastic. Uh, and then our newest brand, which is what we're all drinking right now, is Bamboo. Uh, Bamboo Rum, uh, which has been only out about a year and a half. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's made and distilled from eight different sugar canes from eight different countries, mm -hmm. which is unheard of. It's aged up to 15 years. It's produced in Barbados. For those of you who don't know, it's it's Barbados is the original Rum Island. That's right. where rum was created, mm -hmm. um, and it's out of stock every month, which is a good sign. Wow. Yeah. Do you think like I, I don't think people understand the job, the immense job you have? Because I know it's like it's like three different companies that own an insane amount of the market share when sure. it comes to alcohol. Alcohol, right? sure. like an insane amount, right? So like the things I think you're doing is probably things people been telling them to do for years and they've probably never done. Yep. Do you think now that they see your success, they might try some of the things that you Of that course. And we, we, I think, well, actually, in reality is what typically happens is they try to stop you first. Right. <laughs> they don't want to copy you. They want to stop you. Right. So what they'll do and is try to force you out of accounts. Let's say, you know, trying to get a, a club or a bar not to carry the brand. Right. Um, they'll try to emulate, emulate you, but... I think what we do, we're better, we're faster, we're we're quicker, uh, we're willing to try things. Mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, we have on Bel Air as an example. Uh, there's a whole movement that started called Black Bottle Boys, Black Bottle Girls. Right. We didn't start that. That's not something we created. Right. That was something we saw on social media started happening on its own, mm -hmm. and we're like, this is great. We should. We should work with that audience. And we started creating apparel with Black Bottle Boys, Black Bottle Girls. We created a whole persona. And then it turned into Lux Boys with DJ mm -hmm. Khaled and Gold Bottle. And 
So all, all squad. that gold squad, right. uh, Steve Aoki, all this stuff happened organically. And I think my view, it, it's not a, don't take it the wrong way, but sometimes not having a plan is a great plan mm-hmm. because you learn, for me, all these brands are like my kids. I'm learning about them. I'm learning who likes them and who doesn't, how they affect the market, how they don't, what they're good at and what they're not. And that's the beauty of this. If I chose, and that's what a big company will do, I'm gonna, they're going to say, well, our plan is for the next two years we're going to do this, this, and this. If they're wrong day one, right. they're going to be wrong for the next two years. Right. And for us, it's I, I like to try things. I want to see what works. I, I think the try. secret, too, is like um, is embracing who embraces you. I think Correct. a lot of the big brands do not do that. I think, and I think, sorry, I think that's where my affinity to music is the same thing. Mm-hmm. I, I was, I can't remember if it was... Uh, I think it was G. Erbo when we did uh, the interview with him on Self Made. Um, he's he's putting a he's not putting a whole song on SoundCloud. He's just putting a hook. He wants to see how that reacts. What kind of what kind of reaction is he getting? Right. And if it's good, okay, now he's going to come back and start working on it again. So to me, we're kind of doing the same thing. Right. Or or Russ, I remember we interviewed Russ, and he's telling a story how he's he's watching what the fans are doing, and he sees. His fans were in the state of Washington. He has no idea why, but he said, I'm going to Washington. I'm going to go to Washington, embrace my fans, and that's where they are, so I'm going to go do this. Right. But I think that's what, an, that to me, we're, the brands are like an artist, just trying to find the audience. And then you, the goal, like any artist, is to expand it, right? To get mm-hmm. to expand your where you're going to go with it. And right. That's what we try to do. That's what we try to do. Nice. So 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 why why come out now? Like usually people that that's behind big brands and big companies usually kind of stay behind the scenes. Why why show your face now? I, I think it's it's a great question. I think it's a combination of uh, of me doing the self made interviews and and realizing in having these conversations because I'm sharing my own story to Fat Joe or I'm sharing my own story to Nipsey Hussle, and they're they're. Nipsey's great because he's curious. He's a business guy. He wants to learn. And that's why I love those conversations because I'm picking up off him and he's right. picking up off me. And it kind of made me realize I think I have something to say too. And right. I think people from a business side are, can learn a little bit. So I, it's, it, to me, it's telling my story where it didn't happen overnight. And the things I went through I think is a positive thing. And if I can share that and if it helps people or inspires people, um, I, I wish when I think back and I, I use Rhapsody as an example, Rhapsody, you know, Ninth Wonder. Right. So Rhapsody had Ninth Wonder. Ninth Wonder was there for her from day one. Mm. And he's been there ever since. I wish I had that. Right. You know, I wish I had somebody in my corner saying, do it this way, try it this way. But I didn't. And when I look back, you know, that's what. I want to be able to give back is supporting people who have an idea and want to try something. It's tough. Right. It's there's no question it's tough. Um, but I think I can share stories that kind of helps you get to that next level. Um, and I think that's a positive. I think the other side is I think we are a good example in the hip hop world of supporting artists. And I think that is a great thing for corporate America to give back. Get, Giving back mean it can just mean a thank you. Right. It could just be the phone call that says, "Geez, I saw you put me in a video. This is fantastic." Right. Um, uh, Which no brand does. What? what not? <clears throat> I want to say no brand. I would say most brands, most brands don't. Yeah. No, I would say I would say ninety nine percent of brands right. don't. <laughs> I, I make a. I made a. Whether it's a joke or not, I, I jokingly said on 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 uh, an interview about Rolex, and I. Rick Ross bought me a Rolex for my birthday. It's the most expensive gift I've ever been given. Wow. Uh, and my, and therefore, my wife, if she's listening, I'm expecting something nicer. Right. <laughs> um, but, but Rick owns more Rolexes than I, I've ever seen in my life, yet Roger Federer is the one with the contract. Right. You know, like, who's done more for Rolex? The, the hip-hop community and putting in videos and, and pictures – or or tennis players like that's kind of right. screwed up. What do you think the stigma is though? Why do you think um, certain brands don't want to connect themselves with hip artists? Do you think it's a race thing? Do you think it's an image thing? Do you think it's a? I think it's. Uh, I I can't put myself in their position. I think 
either it could be they're just clueless and it's right. that may sound uh may not sound real but it can be they right. just have no idea it could be that that they are afraid they're mm. afraid of that stigma and all of a sudden the brand is perceived a certain way right but that's their job to grow their audience right it's you know it's it should be their job to also embrace who's their consumer. Right. So to me, those things can work together. I think that's a positive thing. Right. Well, I definitely want to thank you for uh, telling your story. I, th- I think it's very inspirational, especially with your mom just holding you down and having your back. Oh, my but mom I- is I think close to ninety. She rollerblades every day. Wow. Wow. She's been doing it for forty years. She's a nut. Uh, she's <laughs> she's uh, yes, she's my uh, she's my rock. Man. She's my rock. Definitely, man. Thank you definitely for sharing this story because it's very inspirational just as far as just like understanding like how far and how long it took you to work hard yep. to get somewhere. It, it, it gives me another boost. It's it's pay, uh, one word I u- also use is patience. Be right. patient. Uh, there's no rush. You know, brands, artists, it takes time. Uh, but uh, I think it was Fat Joe who said, you know, enjoying the process. You've got to embrace, you know, what happened today and, and mo- what happened the next day. I remember the first check, you know, check I got from a distributor, and I went to the, the, the bank to the teller to, to go deposit it, and I was hoping she'd look up at me and, and <laughs> be like, oh, you know, you're making a deposit. No one looked, but I remember that day. <laughs> you know, like those things, like the young Brett, no, I wanted the money now. I wanted everything to happen now. I wanted the brand to blow up huge now. It doesn't work. If it, if it happens, God bless. But doesn't it, it, That's not the way it works. It's not. So... Patience, patience, patience. Well, you're a great guy. I definitely wish you the best and many more blessings. Thank you. Brad Brush, ladies and gentlemen, then Dirty Boy. Yo, Dirty. Yo, Dirty.